Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in this video we're gonna go over the awesome Tomorrow Never Knows by the Beatles. This is a one chord modal jam, Indian classical inspired, kind of has that psychedelic vibe. Basically just a C7 and the scale that goes along with that, which is the mixolydian mode. So we're gonna go over a little bit of that theory, a few different ways to approach covering and playing and soloing over this song. And in my opinion, the best way to learn about scales and chords and modes and theory and any sort of concept is through actual songs. And this one perfectly exemplifies the mixolydian mode especially. So this goes along with unit 12 in my Fret Live Fretboard Mastery program. And I'll put a link to the course and a video tour of the course in the description if you wanna learn more. As always, I've got some extra goodies to go along with this lesson for Pal Music patrons, which include scale charts on C mixolydian and the C minor pentatonic, chord charts on C7, C7 arpeggios, and all of that is linked in the description. There's also a link to a free full color PDF on the five shapes of the pentatonic and diatonic scale that anyone could download. All right, let's get into the lesson. So we have really just one chord going on, and that chord is a C7. So what a C7 is, is just a major triad, a basic major C chord, the notes C, E, and G, root third and fifth, plus a minor seven, also known as a flat seven. What's also incredible about this melody is it literally only uses the notes of the chord C7. Root, third, fifth, flat, seven. Now a C7 in diatonic harmony, that means like, let's say we're in a key. There's only one dominant seven chord. And in a major key, that's always the five chord or the fifth chord in a key. So in diatonic harmony, the only key that this chord occurs in, a C7, is the key of F. It's the five chord in the key of F. So this chord would be diatonic to the key of F. But we're playing modally, so we're taking that chord, and instead of making that the five chord, as it would be in the key of F, we're gonna make that the one chord. And in this case, the only chord. And we could say that C mixolydian mode and the F major scale are relative modes. So that means we're playing modally, and we're making the C7 our home chord, and in this case, our only chord. Just to make this a little clearer, saying that F major and C mixolydian are relative modes means that they share the exact same notes and chords. And if we lay all those notes on a continuum and we just bracket our start and end points for F major, F to F, and for C mixolydian, C to C, you'll see they have the same chords, they have the same notes. It's just when we tonicize a note other than F, meaning we make that the home note, we make everything revolve around either that note or that chord, we're now playing within a mode 
of that major scale. And to be even more accurate, the major scale itself is just the first mode, whereas the mixolydian is the fifth mode. And then the last key point here is that being that the diatonic scale isn't symmetrical, it's a mixture of half steps and whole steps, a half step being one fret on guitar, a whole step being two frets on guitar, the resulting intervals from the new root note are completely different. In the case of the mixolydian mode, it's very similar to major. The only difference is that the seventh, which is a major seventh in a major scale, is now a minor seventh. And you could see that because from the note B flat to C, that's a two fret distance on the guitar. Whereas from the note E to F, that's a one fret distance. So without understanding all the intervals of all the modes, just see how relative to the new starting pitch, the intervals are going to change. And that's what gives a mode a completely different sound than its parent scale or its relative modes. So the scale that goes along with that chord is a major scale with a minor seventh, which is also known as the mixolydian mode. One, major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, minor seventh, root. Back to the one. If we were in the key of C, we would have a major seventh on the C chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, major seven, one, which is a half step away from the root. Major seven, one. But we don't have that. We have minor seventh one. One, two, three, four, five, six, minor seventh one. One of the cool things is there's a little guitar solo in there, often goes, I think, in reverse, and he's not playing C mixolydian. He's playing the C minor pentatonic scale. So in the solo, you hear him do things like. Right? So that's totally fine. You could you could play the minor pentatonic scale, but a lot of the kind of string things going on all have that mixolydian vibe. So you can do C mixolydian or you can do that minor pentatonic. So to go a little deeper on this, a C7, it has a minor seventh, but it has a major third. The C minor pentatonic scale has a minor seventh and a minor third. So other than that flat third, all the other notes in a C minor pentatonic scale are in C mixolydian and work over the C7, but that flat third, that minor third, rubbing against the major third in the chord, that's a big part of the bluesy sound just in a basic blues, and that's what the Beatles achieve with the guitar solo on this track. The cool thing about the blues is that the blues uses dominant seven chords. So if we were gonna play a C blues, we could play over a C7, C minor pentatonic. So stylistically, that works over the blues, and it also sounds really cool over this modal jam, which isn't bluesy, but it still works, playing a minor pentatonic scale over a dominant seven chord. That's what we do in the blues, and that's what I'm presuming George Harrison does over this modal jam as well. So what I did for my jam, is I played a C major, just as an A shaped bar chord, right? Cause here's an A chord. Now if I imagine my index finger is the root and actually I bar it, let's say I bar it with my pinky. And then I just slide it up three frets. Then it's an A-shaped bar chord. Now I like to use my pinky. Some people like to use their ring finger. I just find it more comfortable with my pinky. The main thing is that we wanna angle our finger so that we get this triad, but not the high E string. You'll start to get a feel for that angle. You wanna mute the high E string with the flesh. And then I mute the low E string with the flesh in my index finger. So with the bar, whether you do the ring finger or the pinky, you kind of want to get a little bit of the outer edge of this finger. So the way to facilitate that is to kind of push your elbow out a little bit and twist. So if you twist this way, you'll get that outer edge. 
And then this finger just plays the root note. Kind of like you're holding a bowling ball. Then, just to get that cool harmony, I played this chord. And I heard this note featured a little bit too, and that is the second. So this is a C sus2 right here. A C sus2 doesn't have a third. It's a sus chord because it has no third. The third is suspended, in this case below. The third, the major third, goes down to a second. So we have root, fifth, root, second, fifth. Beautiful chord. Now a C7 sus2, we add that minor seventh. Great chord. So I just went from here to here. Now when you do the C sus2, now we're barring with the index finger and you want this outer part of your index finger. So the way to get that is to bring your elbow in. And as you can see, when I bring my elbow in, these fingers end up pointing straight into the fretboard. And this goes straight up and down a little bit to the side. And now it's more of this kind of a twist. So that elbow coming in, sometimes you need to push the neck out a little really helps facilitate any index finger bar chords, whether it's this or, right? And then to get the C7 sus2, we just take that pinky and drop it down to the sixth fret of the high E string. So C sus2, C7 sus2. Let's see if we can do that together. We'll hold each chord for four beats. One, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. C7 sus2, three, four. C, two, three, four. C7 sus2. When I played the melody, I was thinking on this C7 right here. This is in the E7 shape, right? There's an E7. If I played it like this with fingers two and three, and put my finger as if it was the nut and just slide that up to a C root note on the low E string. There it is. And that melody goes three, 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 five, one, three, one, five, 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 flat seven, one, five, 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 flat seven, one. <laughs> right, that's it. And then for my solo, I was just approaching that mixolydian mode on one string. So it's good to, what's great about one string is you could really see the intervals. One, flat seven, six, five, four, three. Three, four, five, six, flat seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. Right, so. And then at one point I did. That just sounds so Eastern, right? I like doing these hammer pull-off slides. And then I got that whammy involved. And then once I worked my way up here, goes along with this chord form right right and then
And then at one point I just played the arpeggio. I did something like. That's a C7 arpeggio. Right, so the main thing to keep in mind is that you wanna learn your diatonic scales. If you learn the natural minor scale or the major scale, you know mixolydian mode. You just have to understand the relative key that you're in. So like I said, C mixolydian mode and C7 is relative to F major. If you know that mixolydian mode is the fifth mode and it goes along with the dominant seven chord, well then you gotta think, well C7 is the five chord of what key? F major. And then, so if you know your F major scale, just play that and you're playing C mixolydian mode. By the same token, what minor scale is relative to F major? D. If you're playing D minor, here's D minor. But now I ended on C, so watch this. I'm gonna start on C and then go into this D minor scale. So. then it sounds like mixolydian. Same with the F major scale, right? So these two diatonic shapes that I used are the F major scale, they're the D minor scale, they're the C mixolydian scale. So you wanna understand your relative modes. Relative minor or major is relative modes, so is mixolydian, so is Dorian, so is Locrian, so is all these other modes, right? So if you wanna truly understand where I'm coming from with this, check out the Fret Live Fretboard Mastery Program. We start from the very, very foundations of music theory, just understanding the chromatic scale and intervals. And from there we build keys and scales and triads, and it's a song-based curriculum. So each lesson has a song to learn and a creative assignment so that you're applying each concept to actually make music. So you could either do that as a self-paced course, so anyone at any time can do that, or four times a year you could join a cohort of 40 other students. There's a group where you share your work, you get access to a new unit each week, and there's twice weekly live Zoom sessions that you could attend and interact with me and your classmates face to face. So. The self-paced is half price, but you don't get that full classroom experience. Anyway, I'll link that in the description. If you want the tab to go along with this lesson, that's available for Pow Music patrons, and the link is also in the description. So this is gonna be part one of my exploration of the Beatles using Mixolydian mode. The next one, we're gonna go over Norwegian wood, which is not quite as drone-like. You know, this is just one chord. No, Norwegian wood feels like one chord, but there's actually three chords in the verse, and then the chorus or the bridge has another three or four chords, and it goes from Mixolydian to Dorian. So there's a little bit more to analyze there, so that'll be the part two. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have fun. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Happy playing, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video on power music. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down in the description. I hope you had a great rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I just want to take a quick moment to thank the following upper tier power music patrons, Jake Martin, Jeff Bellestein, Blake Patsy, Scott Lee, Randy Wallingford, Lemuel Faustin, Donald James Grass, Noah Brand, Steve Pisano, Trampus Thompson, Andrew Vogel, John Cushman, Chris Watts, Arwen Guzen, Derek Mickle, Sean Ellis, Joseph McCarthy, and Don Stringham. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. Thank you to all the Pound Music patrons. Happy playing, and I'll see you guys next time.